Hi everybody, this is Bastian and today we're going to take a look at the Tennis and Gambit by annotating a game I played against the Hobday Chess Engine. So, the Tennis and Gambit starts out with the ready opening, typically, Knight to F3, Black plays uh, Palm to D5, and now White plays E4. So, it looks like we're um, offering up a gambit pawn with um, an immediate attack on uh, the knight. So what's the point? Pawn takes pawn, and now knight to, knight to g5. And knight to g5 serves two purposes. First, immediately we're trying to um, counterattack on e4. The second, the knight is attacking the weak square on f7. Now, black, if he wants to defend his pawn, can do so uh, in a few ways. He can try f5, but this just opens up the diagonals to the king. Looks very weakening for black. And after bishop to c4, threatening a fork, Black can either play the unnatural knight to h6 to cover, or he can try e6 to give back the pawn. White can take the pawn, bishop takes knight, bishop takes bishop, so the material is even, but uh, white has a very annoying bishop now on e6. And if black tries to chase it with, say, um, queen to f6, and I've had this played once or twice, he's creating weaknesses on b7. So bishop c8 attacks the pawn, and there's no real defense to it. If uh, b6, rook becomes trapped. If queen to c6. Black will lose a pawn on f5, so black must be very careful. Instead of uh, f5, black can try queen to d5, attacking the knight and protecting the pawn. So at this point, white can play knight to c3 to chase the queen because then simply queen takes knight so after queen d5 perhaps d3 is best protecting the knight pawn takes pawn now knight to c3 to attack the queen queen e5 check bishop blocks pawn takes pawn so black tries to grab another pawn and now white should play queen to d8 forcing an exchange king takes queen white recaptures with a triple fork king e8 and knight takes queen on e5 now in this line we can see that white has three pieces developed and black's king has lost castling privileges. White is down two pawns, but after um, developing the bishop to d3, he can immediately recapture one. Or um, let's say black plays around the move. Um, white has attacking ideas like knight to uh, d5. Threatening a fork. And if king to d8, black walks in another fork. So there are plenty of attacking opportunities for white. And white has knight compensation for uh, the two pawns.
finally if not pawn to f5 is played or um, queen to d4 or um, d5 uh, black has a third possibility to defend the pawn that's knight to f6 and this was played in the game knight f6 protecting the pawn on e4 now again there are two ways for white to continue he has an attack on the pawn on f7 and an attack on the pawn on e4 so either he can develop knight to c3 to try and recapture the pawn or which was played bishop to c4 to continue the attack on f7 and at this point perhaps best for black is to play e6 to block the diagonal but in doing so uh, we can see that this bishop is already uh, locked in white has two pieces developed for um, one for black and white can immediately develop his third piece and continue with the second idea that's recapturing uh, the knight and then it's three pieces against one or um, two against none for black with the locked in bishop should be um, good for white but e6 wasn't played black instead tries e5 and with in playing e5 black signals he's willing to give up uh, his pawn on f7 so black will be giving back a pawn but the point is to develop the bishop to g4 with an attack on the queen so I can take black's queen and he can take my queen so knight takes pawn on f7 bishop takes is also playable bishop to g4 and white must continue accurately now if say f3 to block the bishop and simply create the threat on the queen we can get pawn takes pawn knight takes queen pawn takes g2 threatening to take the rook and promote also threatening the queen on d1 also threatening the knight on d8 so if queen takes bishop um, black can promote queen check and knight takes queen so that's losing for white otherwise if bishop e2 to block the bishop promote check 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 and mate is losing for white So, after bishop to g4, um, white should ignore the threat on his own queen and simply take black's queen first. So knight takes queen, bishop takes queen, and the move the engine overlooked was knight to f7, gaining tempo on um, the rook. So rook moves, and now king takes bishop. So the defense that black used was flawed and now black is down a minor piece. Black continues with b5, trying to uh, chase away the bishop that's guarding the knight on f7. Bishop retreats, c5, trying to cut off the bishop and perhaps even trap the bishop. Bishop e6. Knight to uh, c6. Now the knight can flee with tempo with a discovered attack on the rook. Black must waste one more move with uh, rook to h8. And finally, rook to e1. And white will recapture his gambit pawn. h5, knight takes. Knight to d4. So at this point I'm happy to um, trade off material 
takes knights, pawn takes, bishop retreats, black castles, and bishop to f3. Again, willing to trade material even at the cost of doubling the pawns. Take, take, but these doubled pawns will stop the pawn islands that black has on the e and f file. So I'm willing to play with it. Black continues with c4, and I develop my pieces. Knight to a c3. Now, the king is at this point blocking, locking in the two um, pieces on uh, c1 and a1. So I'm counting to break on um, the queen side and exchange pawns to free my pieces. B4, so uh, the knight has to flee to E4. Bishop G7, A3, and I'm breaking through. Pawn takes pawn, rook takes pawn. King to uh, B7, B3. Bishop to A4, take take. Not only are we seeing that my pieces are um, becoming untangled, but also the king is getting weaker and weaker on um, open and half open files. f5, knight retreats, bishop d6, and bishop to a3, looking to trade off my locked in bishop. So we exchange. Again, I'm willing to exchange material because I'm up a minor piece. Rook to d3. King protects the pawn. Battery on d2. Rook protects. King to b8. And now rook to a5. And black must lose a pawn. There's no way for black to defend it. If, say, e4. Take, take. I can take the pawn on h5. Rook e8 fails because of uh, king takes rook, of course. Rook d5 loses a rook as well. So there's no way to um, uh, guard the pawn. Black tries rook to um, d4. This frees up the d8 rook because otherwise the rook on d4 will be under attack. So I must capture the pawn immediately, otherwise uh, it can get protected. So rook takes pawn, rook to f8, guarding the second pawn. King e3, renewing the threat on the rook. Rook to h4, rook h1 to protect a6 and knight to e2 looking to develop and capture um, the pawn on f5 or even h5 in some cases. Rook to b4 counterattacking on my own pawn and knight to d4. So we're seeing my knight redevelop from c3 to um, d4. Knight is currently guarding the b3 pawn. He's locking out the rook from the fourth ra uh, rank. Now I can bring my rook in and take either pawn. Also, I'm threatening a fork between king and rook. So black must deal with the fork threat, place the in-between move, pawn to f4 check, king e4, and now there's no longer a threat for a fork because of the discovered check, rook to d8, threatening the knight, and rook to d5. 
Now, either his rook can take my rook or next move my rook can take his rook if he remains on the d file. But if the rook moves, I have two attacks. Here the rook takes pawn or king takes pawn. So if black doesn't exchange rooks, he will be down a pawn. So black exchanges. And we're approaching the end game with me up a minor piece and two pawns already. Rook to b7, rook to g1, developing my own rook. Rook check, king to e4, and finally there will be no way to protect the pawn on f4. King c7, rook g5, check. I take the pawn on f4, guarding the knight, rook h7, and now I'm redeveloping the knight in order to take the final pawn. Black threatens pawn on b3, but I'm happy to exchange the pawns. So rook takes pawn, rook takes pawn, king e2. Knight e4, I'm swinging the knight back into a, a better position. Nice outpost on e4. Check. And I'm advancing the h pawn because um, the 4th and 5th rank are currently uh, protected. You exchange the final pieces. And now it's just a matter of um, getting a few pawns across. I can take all the junk on the second and third rank. I just care about the two pawns at this point. And finally I calmly approach the enemy king until he's checkmated. So that was my game using the Tedison Gambit, which is basically a Budapest Gambit with colors reversed. Um, a nice system for attacking players. I hope you enjoyed watching the vids. Please leave a comment and have a great evening.